Hello, I'm sorry I just blew my nose. Well, <laughs> it's totally fine. Hello. Uh, all of that, I've been sick ever for a long time. All of that, of course, will be, will be on air. Yes, I've also <laughs> been coughing since Moss. Our listeners got me sick. Uh, somebody I saw wrote, you talking about Bobby Hall the other night, or the other day, yesterday. Yeah, that's a situation. What do you think? I, was, <laughs> I thought it was great. I thought you were uh, the points being made were incredibly powerful, straightforward, and clear, and I agreed with them. Thank you. You are a decent human being who is now also endorsing the trilogy. It is okay to speak ill of the dead as soon as they die, immediately as soon as they die. Yeah, the points, again, the points that were made were good points. He was 84. He didn't die tragically young or suddenly. He uh, was a shitty guy. He did shitty things. And I don't think it's out of bounds to say that when that person dies, we talk about that person in his or her entirety. Why not? I don't like... I don't see the reason that we all, we have to pretend when bad people pass away, we don't have to pretend like they weren't bad. Like that's and that's not on us, that's on them. That's like on, that's on Bobby Hull. Should- exactly. It's on all of us to not be horrible people. It's not like he like said it, bad things. He physically did bad things. So he he f- was a physically abusive human being and you're not you don't get like a you don't get like a Six week vacation when you die from having people know things about you. Should Kissinger's obit have Vietnam in it? <laughs> Kissinger's obit, Vietnam should be, is like 18th on the list of bad things Kissinger did. <laughs> uh, like, it's not even, he, he openly, like, he, he orchestrated the removal of democratically elected leaders. Who are we he talking secretly about? met with the North Vietnamese and told them that if, <laughs> that if, uh, Nick, that that Nixon would be more sympathetic to their cause than than a Democrat. Mm. He like he killed the Paris Peace Accords. Kissinger. He killed the pair. They were going to end the war. The war went on for six more years than it might have if he hadn't killed the Paris Peace Accords. Like that guy is a psychopath. Arab we shouldn't salute. be waiting till Kissinger dies to talk about how shitty he is. We should be talking about it all the time. Ca- People should be following him around on the street and yelling about how bad he is. Counterpoint. Counterpoint. He's still alive. What a great voice, though. <laughs> oh, that little Kissinger. Oh, my God, that voice. <laughs> Who are we You're part about? of the problem, I mean. <laughs> I'm just Theranos saying, has got to be in there, too. If I was Secretary of State, I would want a voice like that. Of course. That means business. Bobby Hulse. 99 years old. All that, he managed the Cubs. I mean. <laughs> Bobby Hull's daughter, <laughs> Michelle. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Upon hearing... Her father's Hitler comments that Hitler did good things. She said, quote, the first thing I thought about hearing upon hearing the Hitler comments was that's exactly like him. (laughs) (laughs) Damn. (laughs) It's an unbelievable (laughs) quote to be coming from your daughter. None of his five kids talk to him, not even Brett. So that tells you enough. Somebody writes in. I really like Mike Schur, like really enjoy him on the show, needless to say. Thank you. I'm a huge Levitard show fan (laughs) based on the fact I've dedicated my only Twitter to it. But that damn baseball uh, card segment has to end. The people need to rise up. Jessica, please kill it. Is that guy? Wait, I'm sorry. I saw this yesterday. Uh, Not only did that person write that tweet, Jessica liked it. <laughs> Jessica will like anything that is in praise of her. The number of things in my mentions that are talking shit about me, but saying that Jessica yeah. could fix it. Like it, it, I see, I see a heart on so many of those. I like to engage with our fans. So sue me. <laughs> Jessica was appalled by that. The way that she looked at her, looked at you. Uh, but Billy, Billy, you seem to think the same thing quietly uh, and haven't said so. No, I've noticed some critical things of me that are like. Jessica's awesome though, and she's like, like, and I'm like, well, I, mean. I do it to Dan too, for the record. Someone will be like, Dan sucks, but I love Smeddy. I'll be like, ooh, heart. And now Twitter puts that on everyone's feed instead of just people that follow them, whatever. So yeah, Mike saw that. Sorry, Sugats. Mike. Let's do the stat of the but day. Sometimes I like it just to remind myself to bring it up on the show. I do. It's unfair. And then and there then, needs and to be a forget. new button. And yes. then you forget. Well, of course I do. There is there is a new button. It's called bookmark. Uh, oh. 
<laughs> what do you do with it? I mean, <laughs> what's a book? <laughs> Put it. Uh, there are go, marks. Go ahead I mean, and play the stat of the day intro, please. Start of the day. Start of the day. It is the start of the day. Start of the day. Start of the day. It is the start of the day. Start of the day. Start of the day. It is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. <laughs> Congratulations to LeBron James, now fourth all time in assists, about to be number one in points, the oldest player ever. To have a 20-point triple-double. Here's what I found interesting. I looked this up last night. LeBron played 20 seasons. He's about to be the all-time leader in points. He has one scoring title. Kareem, the previous or the current all-time leader in points, scored only won two scoring titles. Found that interesting. Hmm. It's not mind-blowing. It's just interesting. Hmm. It is. You're right. <laughs> just interesting. Yes. Who's the LeBron James, who? by the way, LeBron James has played 20 seasons. On the Basketball Reference website, there are 25 categories of stats, like games, minutes played, whatever. So there's 500 possibilities for him to have led the league in something. Out of those 500 possible categories, he's only led the league in six things. Led the league in games once, which isn't a big that deal. Count, minutes, m- minutes played three times. Assists once and one scoring title in 20 years. Overrated. Yeah. Compiler. Compiler. Classic compiler. <laughs> he passed Steve Nash. Yeah. And Mark Jackson. <laughs> As a scorer and, 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 and assists. <laughs> yes. It's been a pretty good career. What? Overrated. Mike Sure is here to say is only led in compiler. six categories. I was going to ask who, who leads all, all, all time NBA history in scoring titles, but Michael Jordan has 10 of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that feels like uh, the obvious answer there. Does Tom Brady replace Michael Jordan as winner guy now? He should, right? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite thing about the dumb Jordan argument is like he won six titles and he never lost. So that's like saying six gold medals is better than seven gold medals and three silver medals. Like, no. how is that better? This is the way I do it. If he stayed those two years, he would have won eight straight. He would, in my personal record book, Mike, he won eight straight. But Elijah he Wan has never won a championship in my personal record book. He only no, won I'm them because Jordan took a couple of years off. Record book. Well, that's how you do it. I mean, he's got eight titles. That's how, <clears throat> that's how you do it. What about Brady? What about the year after uh, <laughs> the 50 touchdown year to Randy Moss? What about Brady getting his knee blown out? Wouldn't he have won a super? Doesn't he have a Super Bowl ring in your personal record? You go that? ahead and you punish a guy for his dad passing away. I'm not going to do it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you do it. Feel free. But had wait, his dad wait, not passed away, wait, wait, he stays in the wait, NBA eight fit. straight. Oh, you're, you're talking about Michael Jordan. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking back on Hall. No, <laughs> okay. no. Golden Bill Jet. Russell. What about him? Ultimate yeah, winner guy. Him? Bill oh, Russell. A different time. 11. All right, whatever. Is a vampire a zombie? I don't know. What are you talking about? (laughs) He just wants to do third starters. We will do third starters with him in a second. We will open baseball cards with him in a second unless Jessica kills it. But is a vampire a zombie? Uh, uh, Yeah, yes. Yes, definitely. I feel very strongly about this. Yes. Wow, your ind- your indifference is palpable. I spent a, like an hour and a half last night on the BRF site making a list of third starters, and I want to do it before I have to take did, my kids to school. Did you regret that you did? Did you regret that Tom Brady retired this morning, and that your stat of the day has no Tom Brady in it? No, I've given you like fifteen Tom Brady stats. I've given you so many stats. I've given you people everything I have. I'm sick. I've been deadly sick for like eleven days. I drag my my sick ass out of bed every morning to get here and research stats and give them to you, and you bleed me dry. You just ask for more and more and more. Start. I don't know if a vampire is a zombie. I don't know. I don't care. I let me just give my list of best third starters. Why am I being so what? Colicky. Colicky. Colic, because I have colic, essentially. <laughs> That's why. How many starters, how many number three starters are we doing here? How many lists are we doing? Stu Gatz has a top five number three baseball starters of all time. Whittingham has one. Roy has one. 
The way we did it yesterday with number twos, and it was glorious, is we went around the room, and then we agreed who had the best of the fives, the best of the fours, threes, twos, ones. So I think we're going to do it the same way this time, right? Yeah. Okay. And I, I will I will eliminate all my... I have 10 OLIs. I'll eliminate all oh, of them. Oh, for the love well, of I God. Well, I have five. You want to you <laughs> get it down to five? Get it down to five. We're on the same page, you know? All right. I'll get it down to five. Okay. Roy, how many do you have? I have one OLI. I've got okay. three OLIs. Okay. Who else has a list? Anybody? All right. Just name all the OLIs. Go ahead. I don't feel like doing this this way. It's going to take four months to do this. Oh, what do you have? So? <laughs> let's, let's go ahead and... <laughs> well, we got baseball cards to open. Well, what if... What what if, if short, you're short on time suddenly? Yeah. <laughs> What if they just all say their OLIs at the same time to save time? Yeah. I only have one. No, we go around the horn. Yeah, I mean, we'll, do, we'll, do, we'll do rat-a-tat-tat. Here we go. Mm. I'll start with mine. All right, so hold on oh. one second. Order. Whittingham, Roy, me, Mike. Good? Perfect. Good. Great. All right. Okay. OLIs for me, Gil Mesh. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> Kip Wells. <laughs> and Brandon Backey. Excellent. Great. That's great. That's great. great you tickled Mike. It's a great list. It's a great list. Mine is John Smiley. Okay. What, Mike? What? What happened? I think of him as a number two. Now, now, see, a two could be a three, and at times maybe a four. That's the beauty of the list. David Cohn was a one, then he became a two. Wasn't I mean, Smiley a two? And then a three with the Red Sox. That, uh, right? Oh, my God. Where was Smiley a Cody. three? I feel like Pittsburgh. Smiley was the two with, uh, with Pittsburgh. Trebek. Pittsburgh. He was with Trebek. He was the two. Maybe anyway. he flipped. <laughs> okay, very good. Riveting radio here. <laughs> OLI for me, Charlie Lee Brantz. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Dick well Tidrow. <laughs> I'm only trying to make my laugh. I mean, the name, that's all there is to this segment. The segment is just making, say a name that makes people laugh. Denny Nagel. Uh, uh. Craig Swindell. Uh. And Wandy Rodriguez. Oh, wow. <laughs> Rare Wandy. Wandy is good. <laughs> sure, give us yours. Homer Bailey. Oh, yes. God. <laughs> Scott Bankhead. <laughs> you talk <tongue> deep. <laughs> Chris Bazio. Oh, name, man. Bob. Great name. <laughs> Bud Black. <laughs> wow. He played? Tom Candiotti. Ah, uh, the candy oh, man. Wow. He, played, <laughs> he played, says Chris Whittingham. He played, says Bud. I only know him as a manager of the Padres. <laughs> There's no other sport these names could play. None. It has to be. I'll bet Sarah could do it for hockey. Yeah. Do what for hockey? Second line centers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, t- second yeah. Line top top centers. five second line names. Oh, my second God. Second line centers whose name make you smile. Oh, All right. Line uh, Sarah, we will give you time to produce this <laughs> list, or if you have it somewhere on you, top five <laughs> second line Welcome centers ever with funny names that make you smile. Welcome to the show, Sarah. Uh, we will give you uh, time to organize yourself. Don't get sucked into Roy, it. Roy, <laughs> number five, number three starter of all time. Charlie Lee Brand. You got stole my number five. Sorry, well, Roy. that's why you yelled in. Uh, yes, that's why you yelled in some sort of yeah. pain. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was certain. Roy, how much regret do you feel in general because the windows are small around here when there are so many people that you cleared your throat to say something and then it <laughs> took for the ice like up. ninety seconds before <laughs> yeah, you got to say Bill Russell after that. You're I so, called for oh, the ball <laughs> and you passed <laughs> pass to somebody else. That's not fair. Might as well get sent back to the bench. He was too busy laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Number five, Stugatz. I think Woody's up. Uh, it doesn't matter. Of the order. Number five, <laughs> Stugatz. Pete Vukovic. It's a good name. Thank you. Witty, number five. Tomo Oka. Ooh. Wow. Wow. Just uh, to be clear, though, I don't mean to be semantics about this, but was Vukovic indeed a third starter? Like, I think you don't understand this game. Yeah. 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 You don't get the game. the penalty box. I mean, you right. do not get You're the, the game. You're the ball stopper right now. Yeah. Yeah. No, get him out of here. Vukovic a third starter? Get him out of here. He, that's cares? right. Get him out of here. Penalty box. Get out of here. Uh, can I leave, too? Yeah, yeah, no. No, you have to stay. So, you wait, so you won this round? Wait, no. Mike Sherry. Mike hasn't given yet. Yeah. Mike? Timmy Wakefield. Wow. 
Wow. So, all who, right, let's let's gather the votes. I got, I, right. I'll do it. I, you guys don't have to worry about it. Okay. Just let me know who won. So uh, Mike had Wakefield. I had Vukovic, Toma I, Oka, Roy, I Lee Brandt. and Lee Brandt. I think Lee Brandt is out. Lee Brandt's, because Lee Brandt's tough to beat. Used, yeah. yeah. Lee Brandt's tough to beat. It was no L.I., though. It I was know, for but me, it, but it's, right. it's it's really it's really good. He's a classic really three, yeah, and it makes me smile. All right, yeah. all right, yeah. Lee Brand, it is. Thank you, Thank congrats, you. Roy. Right. There it is. Okay. <laughs> all right, Roy, you're number four. William Van Landingham. Oh. <laughs> 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 I'm, we might have to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Roy's killing it. <laughs> Esteban Loiza. Wow. Oh, wow. That made me smile. He was on my, he was on my OLIs that I eliminated. Mike oh. Krukow. <laughs> wow. Kruko. Kruko? Pretty good. Kruko. Kruko. Pretty good. Maybe a number That's fine. All right. You got any money? You're winning right. anyway. I, thank you. I got, one. I got one that I think is tough to beat. Ready? Bob Walk. Wow. 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 Beautiful. I give it to Bob Walk. Yeah. Really? I'm Bob going Walk's Van Willingham. Really? Van Willingham? Mm. Majority vote. Sh- sure, your vote? Uh, I don't know. I, I abstain. Roy, your what? vote? Roy, Roy wins Roy, again? Roy has to abstain. I'm Roy Van Willingham. I mean, you're the tiebreaker. Van you're, Willingham or Bob Walk? Van Willingham. I think you said Bob Walk. Van Landingham. Van Landingham, uh, whatever. Okay. All, right, All right, next. Van Landingham. Number three, Roy. John Halama. <laughs> Yo, Roy's on fire. Pretty good. You did your research last night, Roy. <laughs> Goddamn right, I did. Yeah, you did. Eric Bedard. Oh, oh wow. wow. Oh, wow. Bedard oh, had a stint wow. as a number two, maybe even an ace at one point, Bedard. No? Oh, look who he came was, back. Uh, he was in a big trade that was like, oh, this, some team got an ace. The Mariners <laughs> got an ace. You don't, get, for, uh, you don't get to play the game. You just did the same thing I got penalized for. <laughs> My game, though. <laughs> Nobody's beating Esteban Luiza. <laughs> Go back to the penalty box. Go back to the penalty box. <laughs> Nobody's beating Luiza. <laughs> Don Gullet. Oh. <laughs> Once again, every twin was a number two starter. Every uh, red is a number three starter. Uh, Jeff Weaver. Wow. That's good. Very good. Who, who won that round? Roy, what was yours again? John Halama. I went for Halama. 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 Sweeping yeah. this. Then. Yes. Thank yeah, you. My man. word. All right. So Halama it is. Roy, number two. Ricky Bonus. Jesus, Roy. He's on no, fire. He, no, That's a four a, or five. He's a four or five. Oh, come on. Four or five for me, Clyde. Here's a three for me. Horatio Ramirez. Excellent. Uh, you know what? You're right. You're right. I feel like I got the winning hand here. Atlee Hammaker. <laughs> oh, I think you won man. this one. You won this one. That's really good. Right? I got Jared Washburn. It's <laughs> a good one as well, but I think we go. I think we go for Hammaker there. Okay. All right, Roy. Let number- me make. Let me make one argument for Jared Washburn, which is that in the '84 Wild Card Series, when he pitched with the Angels. He Wait, came it had, into a tie it had to be game. Oh, wouldn't it? Oh, four. Sorry, oh, four. He yeah. came into a tie game, and the in game one, he threw one pitch to David Ortiz. Ortiz hit a game-winning homer. That's kind of a classic <laughs> number three start. Right? Big Poppy. <laughs> All right, Roy, one, number one. one. All right, Oil Can Boyd. So good. So good. So good. Joe Blanton. He makes me smile. He was so bad, though. <laughs> he really was. Sterling Hitchcock. Oh, oh wow. Man. I have Homer Bailey. Oh, jeez. Uh, <laughs> I'm going Hitchcock. Really? Yeah. yeah. Excited. Yeah, I think right. Sterling Hitchcock wins, yeah. Thank yeah. you. I mean, All right, so. Once again, well done, everybody. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Amazing job. job. Yeah, round yeah. of applause. Amazing job. Good job. So there's two ways I can score this. If we're just going on raw winning rounds, then Roy obviously is the winner. He had three rounds, so Sugatsu's two. Mm-hmm. But if we go with a weighted system where you get one point for the number five, but five points for the number one, Roy's got six points. Stugatz just scored nine points. Thank oh, you. man. Thank you. Wow. I like your scoring system. All right, so. <laughs> as long as it benefits me. So can, can we repeat again the definitive top five? Roy, you had five through three, and Stu, you had two through one. Yes. So, Roy, number five. All right, Charlie Lee Brandt. Number four. William Van Landingham. <laughs> Every time. Number three. John Halama. <laughs> Stu, number two. Seven. Atlee Hammaker. Wonderful. And Sterling Hitchcock. 
That is a hell of a rotation right there, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it's a great group. It's a great group. <laughs> Mike, sure, do you have baseball cards for us? We're going like to win 82 games and finish third. <laughs> yeah, his, his internet is... All right, I got... Uh, uh, I gave... All right, sure, you're back. Go for it. Are you, am I having internet problems? You're fine you are, now. You were, but you're All good right. now. Go yeah. for I it. I got 93 tops, but I also... I also have a uh, 2006 upper deck. Should I open the? Should I open Ooh, a 2006 upper deck? That would be great for me. I don't know if it would be great for everyone in this room, but go for it. Uh, Jessica canceled. Let's just do it for variety. Jessica sake. canceled this segment. Jessica doesn't want to do the baseball ne- card. Neither of those today. work for me, actually. Yeah, I mean, okay, so he's going to do it anyway. He's going to ignore everybody. And my just- internet is bad. What I heard was I heard Jessica saying that she thought 2006 upper deck. That's what I heard. I heard good for, for me. Internet. Mm-hmm. Oh, these are weird. Did Atley Hammaker make you smile there, uh, wherever you ooh, were? Yeah, it's a good name, good. Atley good Hammaker. Raphael Palmiro. Oh wow. Oh, here's here's a great one. Unieski Betancourt. Look at that. <laughs> That's a good name. Wonderful. That's a Wonderful. good name. <laughs> he hey, it's Eric Tony's Bedard. Street. It's number three starter, <laughs> wow, Eric Bedard. So cool. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> also a two, possibly a one at one point. I mean. Gavin Floyd, that's kind of a number that's three a, starter. Well, that's a four. Right there. That's a four or five, I think. Grady Sizemore. Mm, Three good years. years. No, center center fielder is going make you smile. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What a great photograph of Sizemore flat on his ass in center field with holding the ball yep. up. <laughs> Look at that. Can't see it. Uh, please go to podcast. Dot, uh, GoFundMe uh, dot com slash podcast. Give Jesus. money to ALS research in honor of our friend Sarah. Try Lines. that again. Then Try enter that yourself. Again. Oh, <laughs> please go to GoFundMe dot com slash podcast. Donate money to ALS research for our friend Sarah Langs, and also then enter your name in our raffle at podcastraffle at gmail dot com to win any of these cards and essays by Joe Posnanski and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, it ends on Friday. Friday midnight. It ends. So get those before uh, you go any further. In. I just want people to know that uh, that Stugatz should be enraged with Sarah Langs because uh, she just won the Casey Stengel. Don't do it, Stugatz. You can look it up award. Really? Yeah. You can look it up award. Seems like it should be not the Casey Stengel. You can look it up award. The Stugatz. You can look it up award. <laughs> Casey Stengel. That's more, that's more of a Cody move, right? Look it up. No, it is, no, it is not. I just, I no, just it said is it. not. I said it, and I said it's Stugatz's voice. Move, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Mm-hmm. Hang on, hang on, everybody. Hang on. It's Vicente Padilla. Oh, yeah. my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I mean, a classic oh, line. Wow. Oh, line yeah. number two starter. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, I have and re- here's Matt Morris, number one, number two, I would say. Yeah. Matt yeah. Morris. Totally. I, I have just realized, I don't know whether I can make this linear or not, but I do believe that Sarah and Jessica, like a lot of women, are confused by the ability of men to just spit a name and do this in sports in a way that they're just having their own language. I've noticed this a number of times uh, that men can entertain themselves Don't just by holding up a card <laughs> and and laughing at, at a ridiculous name. Yes, this goes on for hours. <laughs> the sound effects do get me, though. Where's your top five line two centers? I mean... <laughs> If you want me to name sports names, just don't make it 80s third pitchers. I don't give a shit. Oh, 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 wow, wow. wow. Oh, oh, how dare you? Uh, yeah. That is rude. Don't make this a male That is straight up thing. rude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, it's Jane Fonda acted her ass off. She should not be defined as just somebody else's, you know, mother or whatever. Ted Turner's wife? Ted Turner's wife. That's what I was looking for. Damn it. <laughs> Somebody else's mother is what you said. I know. Uh, Get out of here. But before you get out of here, because I don't want to open up any more cards. I want to be done with the cards. But I did want to ask you a couple of television questions before you go. One, I mentioned earlier in the show that Peacock represented 1% of total TV consumption in the month of December. HBO Max, 1.4%. Disney, 1.9%. Prime Video, 2.7%. Hulu, 3.4%. Netflix, 7.5%. And YouTube, 8.7%. 8.7. I'm fascinated by this technological shift going on in the entertainment habits of people in in this country and around the world. You make what of those numbers as someone who works for Peacock, Mike? Well, I don't work for Peacock. I work for Universal TV, um, but technically. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the way it's going. It's all going to streaming. It's all There's going to be tons of consolidation 
It's only going to increase, I would say, over the next few years. The, the shocking one to me there is YouTube because YouTube is, uh, you think of YouTube as like funny cat videos or whatever, but like that is where people are going now. So many people I know have YouTube TV, uh, which is just like the now the merging of internet and TV is not quite complete, but it's it's nearing completion. It's nearing, uh, we're nearing a time where like that's just what um, all entertainment is. It just comes to the internet. So that's the 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 one that sends that sh should send shockwaves through the industry I work in is YouTube. Like the others are predictable. YouTube, I think I don't think anybody pre maybe would have predicted that YouTube would be number one. So it, that's a little scary. The why scary? Well, because if you're getting everything on YouTube, like think about late night writers, right? Like you work for a late night show, you work for anyone, John Oliver or um, or Seth Meyers or anybody like that. Your work is being consumed through YouTube, which means that the structure of your payment is different. Like if people only watch it on YouTube, the residuals, the money that you get for people watching the material that you've written doesn't, you don't get paid through the mechanism of the residual system that we collectively bargained with the networks. You're getting paid through the internet, which is a different system. It's one of the things that we're going to be talking about in this negotiation that's upcoming. Uh, so it has, I've, everything has to be, all the rules for payment and for licensing of work have to be transferred fully from the networks to the internet because if they aren't then we're then we're all every artist who works on a show is going to get royally screwed the other question i had for you since you mentioned late night is the idea of cnn entertaining bill maher as a late night host as uh fox has apparently had success with Gr what is it grunfeld uh I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Grunfeld. I, I mean, Ernie Grunfeld. I, I, yeah, I don't know the name of the person, but it's the number one. Is it not the Gunfield. number one? Uh, thank you. The number yeah. one late night show. Point. Uh, Bill Maher uh, uh, and uh, CNN. What do you make of that link up? Well, you know that company Warner Brothers Discovery. It's been tilts to the right. That new company that the leadership tilts to the right. John Malone's one of the largest shareholders. He owns a chunk of America larger than Rhode Island. Um, and he's extremely conservative. He's on record saying that the Fox News model is the best model for news and he wants to be CNN more like Fox News. So, you know, Mars sort of an iconoclastic guy who has some liberal leanings and some libertarian tendencies. He's also an avowed Islamophobe, says a lot of stupid racist and sexist stuff. Um, he once said that dealing, what did he say? Dealing with Hamas is like dealing with a crazy woman who's trying to kill you. You can only hold her wrist so long before you have to slap her. So he's a charming guy. Um, and it's not surprising to me that, that the new Warner Brothers Discovery would want more people like that uh, on their daily programming. The news shouldn't be for profit. That's really the main thing. News should not be a for-profit business. It should be a, a, a non-profit public service. And when it run, is run for profit, it has the risk of being directed by people like John Malone and the folks who run Warner Brothers Discovery, and it's too bad. The mailman. It's be a downer. Uh, also, Unieski Betancourt. <laughs> hey! Look at that. Hey! Unieski Betancourt. <laughs> See you later, Mike. <laughs> Bye. So we almost touched on it. We are talking about LeBron and the last two-minute reports and how the Lakers have had some tough ones down the stretch. But... Tom Haberstro actually did the math on this on Basketball Illuminati, the newest episode you can catch today wherever you get podcasts featuring guest Nate Jones, who works for Goodwin Sports Management. But Tom did the math. And do you know, Stugatz, that the Lakers have been involved in, I believe it's 19 last two last two minute report games l2ms right so like they're like games within five points i think is the is the criteria in with within the last two minutes yes so they've qualified for 19 this season yes they've been they, okay. they well they've had 19 of those games where a last two minute report was uh was required put out there yeah. according to the league there were 34 blown decisions by referees in those 19 games or about 1.8 per report of those 34, how many botch decisions helped the Lakers versus hurt the Lakers? 34. 34 botched calls that had to should have been gone the other way. How many Stugats do you think helped the Lakers? I would guess uh I would guess 14 helped the Lakers. Right. So that's what 
LeBron would have you believe is that they get screwed every single time. Yes. 20 missed decisions helped the Lakers. 14 hurt the Lakers. So we're looking at the L2Ms, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, LeBron, you're not getting screwed. You're actually getting the benefit of the doubt. You're being helped. Yes. By the referees in the final two minutes of NBA games. And the one time you don't get any help, you act like that. Pretty much. <laughs> it is like I It I, is against the Celtics national TV. Sure. Such an obvious foul on Jason Tatum. Like we all agree on that. But and the he was having an amazing game. And That's, he was, of yeah. course. And these games are big. But Everyone they're only matters. big because of LeBron. I mean, he put well, the roster together. Well, no, well, so. well, they're also in a playoff chase where every team in the Western Conference is bunched up and Mike Schur illustrated for us that like these four decisions are the difference between them being in fourth and them being in 13th. Yes, I will- but he's benefiting more than he's getting hurt in the final Correct. two minutes of game. It's so what does he of, have to complain about? It's one, ones that are getting magnified, though. Well, and the other thing I wanted to, to argue about with you guys yesterday when I'm listening or the, whatever the day that Mike said they would have been 27 and 23. You're assuming that he goes to the free throw line and makes them. True. Right. We're we're like we're making a lot of assumptions, or that if Embiid got called for fouling Westbrook, that that would have. There's a lot of assumptions that are happening here. It's not, these are not cut and dry. They would have won the game. They would have had a great opportunity to. But again, my thing is Stugatz. NBA has been around 76 years. Now we're crying about missed calls. 76 years. That now it's the end of civilization. Oh, people have been complaining about it, no. officiating for as long as I can but remember. This, we just have more technology, more this, research. So what mean. happened Saturday where people were fainting? Oh my God! Oh, this, this game is broken. I'm it like, what absurd. are you talking about, man? Yeah. It was a bad missed call. Get over it. But does location of the game matter in this situation? They were in Boston. Sure. Right. Well, I mean, sure, sure. I think the Lakers Celtics Saturday ABC game. Definitely, with with the stakes riding high for the Lakers, with LeBron playing like a, a dynamite game. What you're saying is react that way on a Tuesday. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> against the Magic. Right, against Orlando. Sarah, but there, he gets that call against Orlando, yeah. right? Sarah, are there NHL teams that the rest of the league feels like they get every major decision? Like, are there grand refereeing conspiracies in hockey? Oh, Yes. <laughs> The Maple Leafs are either getting the benefit of the doubt 500% of the time or they're not 500% of the time. In reality, someone did the math. I forget who, but it's just like every other team. Like, the refs are not biased in hockey. Everyone thinks they are, but they're just kind of incompetent. So it's like... What's the sport nah, where nah, everyone nah. says the refs are great? Because I hear about every single there sport. Isn't a single There's one. pickleball ref controversy. People were tagging me in over the weekend. <laughs> I shit you not. I watched the clip are 50 times. Me? I go. I don't know what's happening in this video. I don't watch pickleball enough. But there is controversy in pickleball. You're mm. a pickleball expert. How can you not be watching no, the video? I renounce pickleball. Why? Because it went too mainstream. It's toxic. Pickleball it's, culture is toxic. People is it? getting fights. What? Yeah. It's toxic. Yeah, you people, go play yeah. pickleball on a Saturday and the courts are packed. You're getting in fights. People are yelling at you. Yep. Happened a few weeks ago. I went to play pickleball with Izzy and his boyfriend and, and my boyfriend. Izzy's gay? <laughs> and we got there and it was a absolute shit show of, of people arguing over courts, screaming like, oh, you're playing to 21. We only play to 11 here. And then I went again with Lee to a different pickleball court. Like, oh, maybe these people will be more chill. No. First of all, we got our asses kicked by 75 year olds. Like they dusted us like 11 to one. Second Damn. of all, they're, they're just giving you unsolicited advice. They're telling you the rules They're making. It's just so arbitrary. Just let me go and play singles and leave after 20 minutes. It's not. We don't have to take this you, so seriously. What's going to have to happen, I'm telling you right now, is they're going to need. So they'll convert like a tennis court into a pickleball court, but they'll do it with one to two courts. Right. Like there's 16 tennis courts. What they're going to need to do is convert at least eight tennis courts into pickleball courts because it's becoming more popular than tennis. It is. Not like amongst like older people, younger people, middle aged. They love pickleball. It's tennis. You don't have to run as much, you know? There's a pickleball bar in Boston called PKL, and it gets very rowdy. Right. There you Wait, go. Are they playing yeah. a bar? Pickleball, pickleball I feel like everything bar? gets rowdy at a yes. bar in Boston. <laughs> yeah. uh, to be fair, you're not yeah. wrong. It'd be a great thing. Like, there's a chess bar in Boston, yeah. and it's things rowdy. get crazy. <laughs> they do. <laughs> the, uh, 
I would say tennis might be the one sport. I, I know there's been some controversy. No, the the, um, the people have a go at the umpires. Uh, yeah, but you have the ball machine. It's technology. Oh, McEnroe. I know. Yeah, but no, now, but, ha- but the Hawkeye, technology. Hawkeye, no. Hawkeye has changed everything. Hawkeye yeah. has changed Tenor. everything. Yeah, but that's not Ouch. the refs then, right? That's... Oh. <laughs> I was watching the Australian Open. Yeah, they got like, rid of them. <laughs> how do they do that? The same. The, they say it the same way every time. Same pitch. And I found out it was just a recording. They hit a button. Bolt. Do they really? What? It's yeah. Recording? Oh, wow. Yes. Oh they, man. That actually makes me feel a little bit less stupid. No, not my, much though. My childhood <laughs> just ruined that. Oh, Unbelievable. How long have they been doing that? I don't think very long. Right, Stugatz? I don't. I don't not know. Long. I, no. So go back to pickleball. Like, does the ball bounce in pickleball? Why yes. Not? Okay. I must it say bounces but low, it, right? But it's if it a, bounces outside, like it, there's rules about where you can stand before. Mm. Like you can't hit the ball in the kitchen without it bouncing the first. The kitchen right. is the area close it's like the crease in hockey you have to stay out of the kitchen hashtag get back in the kitchen ha ha goldie hahn has a career of her own i'm not gonna sit here and allow you to just frame her as someone's mom uh so having a moment by the way the uh the fire station by my house they're always playing pickleball Mm -hmm. but they play it right in front of like the garage door where the fire truck comes out of and I kind of feel like, what if there's an emergency, man? Do they have to, like, wrap up the net and get out of the way? And it just doesn't seem very safe. Bad positioning. Yeah, man, yeah. for a fire department. I imagine a lot of cities right now are panicking, trying to figure out where in our public spaces can we put pickleball. I, I saw in, in my apartment building, there used to be, like, outdoor basketball courts. They've been replaced by pickleball. You're, any any kind of court ish space is being invaded upon by pickleball players. There there are pickleball turf wars happening in New York right now too with the courts around West Fourth Street. They, oh wow! On and Houston, there's been a huge. It used to be a place where people would bring their dogs in the morning and they'd let their dogs run around because it's gated. There's barely any green space in that t- little New neighborhood in New York. Uh, all right. Unnecessary it's just, shot. It's just like there's Concrete no, there's jungle. no, room and then to do the pickleballers showed up and they took over, and then the dog walkers were unhappy, and the pickleball people are unhappy, and there's a big controversy over it. And the pickleballers, like, I, I see both sides of it because look, I love pickleball, I want to play too, but let's be nice. And I feel like pickleballers are giving themselves a bad rap because sometimes they're just not nice and they're too intense about it. It's supposed to be fun. Let's all have fun. And this is why you've renounced pickleball. It is why I renounce pickleball. I will still play sometimes, though. I do. I do love playing. When are you gonna play Bill Lawrence? I'll, well, I'll kick his ass. So okay. <laughs> get away from me when I'm about to play Bill Lawrence. Oh no, okay? boy! You made and a that's great... why the pickleballers need to chill out. You by made the way. a great point <laughs> earlier. No, old like my dad will mop the floor with anyone in here when it comes to pickleball. He plays three times a week. Like old people are good at this. They're sport. so good at yes. it, and they want to just give you so much advice. And I'm like, I don't give a shit about this. I'm doing it for fun. These people are like, oh well, you got to do this when you serve, and then you got to learn how to dink. And I'm like. Dink these. I don't care. (laughs) Wow, the second time. Wow. Good for you.